Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're gonna keep working on this 175 diesel. Uh, we've got a little bit to do here on the back side as far as the brake system goes. Um, so let me flip this thing around and show you what we got. All right, so one other thing we're gonna check out on this machine is the left brake. Let me show you what it's doing. It brakes fine, but the issue that we have is it doesn't it just doesn't return like what it should. Uh, there's a spring on the other side that's underneath the uh, the foot rest, and it is in fine shape. Um, it's not stretched or anything. Got to looking a little deeper on it, and I think what we might have going on is up there where the brake rod goes in is just full of, of just junk. So. There might be enough stuff in there where it's restricting that band uh, to actually open all the way with the uh, pressure of the spring. I mean, you can pull it forward and you're fine. Both of the springs on the, on the band on the front and the rear are still in place and look to be fine there. So I don't think that's the issue. I think it's simply there's just too much crud in there. So what I'm gonna do next, just to lay another set of eyes on it, um, from the top, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the seat off. We're gonna pull our cover off right here. So we got uh, four nine sixteenths uh, inch nuts to pull out. And we got three three quarters, uh, one on either side and then one right up there in the middle, which is always fun to work on. But we're gonna get that pulled off and pull the seat out of the way. We'll pull that cover off. And that'll allow us actually to look at both sides. And I just wanna check to see what the actual drum looks like in there. Um, and then that, that might tell the story. The brake's not locking up, it's just the fact that that won't return. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm going to probably just flip over to time lapse and we'll zip the seat and that cover off and then we'll uh, cut back in with some live video here and inspect uh, looking from the top. All right, so we got all the bolts out of there, got the seat off, and we're gonna pull our cover off of here. That'll give us a good look at the brake system here. It'll also allow us to find a lot more junk down in here. So let's check, take a peek at him. I'm just looking in there at that pad where we're at with the rivets. This one, maybe get the flashlight in there. See that pad right down in there. So it's that edge, it's right in here by that carrier bolt. And over here on this side, that one pushes out against this housing right here. So in between there, if you're not sure how those work, there's a disc that's got ball bearings in it. When you clamp down or push down on the brake, it clamps down the band by pivoting here. And the drum is two separate pieces. And when you start slowing down the outer half of it, it rides up on those ball bearings and pushes out against the rear carrier a bearing on this side and then the housing over here this is renewable and that's not and then pushing that out is what helps break so you got two two pieces to it um can't see real good i'm just trying to figure out what the brake looks like i don't see anything that's you know too concerning to me on it look like they're fine Look at this one, that's got plenty. This one over here does too, you can see it. It's right there. All right, so that looks fine. I really just feel like that the issue is the debris down in there. That's, that's kind of what I feel like. Let's see if I can see the springs. I think they're down there just far enough where I can't see them. 
I see them sticking out of the housing, so I know I'm fine. All right, so I guess my next step is I'm just gonna take the shop back and just try to clean out up underneath the front where the uh, brick rod goes in. And uh, hopefully, We'll get enough of that stuff cleaned out of there. We won't have any problems. As mentioned, it's just right up there where the brake rod goes into the housing. Right there. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm gonna clean that out and then see what kind of result we get. All right, so I just got done uh, poking around in there, trying to get that uh, debris cleaned out of there. And I did get a little bit, but uh, I think I got something else going on. Not quite sure, it didn't improve the situation any. I did go ahead and disconnect my, my brake lever. You can see that right there. Uh, made sure that it was loose, moved it around. It's tight, I can't even move it. I should be able to move it freely by hand uh, right there, just to you know open up the, uh, sh the uh, shoe. So anyway, what is next is this. We're gonna pull that axle out of there. Um, it's not that big of a deal to do on this side of the machine. The other side, you got your valve uh, body over there and it can be a little more interesting. So first things first here, we're gonna pop the fender off. Once the fender's off, I'm gonna disconnect our uh, three-point lift cylinder. I'm gonna try to just pull the, uh, there's a pin right here. I'm just gonna pull that out. We'll pull our pin out here that pivots off of, and uh, as well as up there. And then we're going to try to just swing it down and not have to disconnect our hydraulic connection here. I think I can do that and then just kind of let it swing down out of the way. And that will give us the clearance that we need in order to pull it. You can see the bottom of the housing right here is going to have to slide straight out. And we're going to be right in the way of that cylinder. So we'll get that out of the way. We've got a couple of connections here for fender lights that we got to get removed as well. And those are right here. We got two sets and they just come up here into this harness. We'll disconnect those. Um, I'm gonna check them to see if they actually work before I disconnect it. That way I'll know for sure whether it's something that I did or if it was just like that. So that's gonna be the uh, next step. You got the cherry picker lined up over there. I've got my helper laying there sleeping on the job. Just can't get good help around here, it's crazy. But we'll get it connected up here with a couple of chains onto that um, cherry picker onto the the uh, rear axle here, and then we'll just slide the whole mechanism out. And then we'll see what we got. Drum and everything will come out. Don't have to pull a pin unless I want to get the brake bands off of there, and that's the pin that you see, which will be accessible in behind this on the inside here. You know, some of the other videos I've done on the WD uh, and WD45, you've got down there at the bottom, you've got your pin and actually this housing has that hole in it you can see it right there and uh so it looks like they use the same the same uh, axle tube but anyway we don't have to mess with that we can unbolt those slide the whole mechanism out and see what we have going on All right, so we got everything disconnected and ready to be removed from the tractor. So I'm, I'm just gonna lift up a little bit with my cherry picker and we're gonna just slide out. Uh, the axle and the whole assembly is just gonna wanna move right out here. I might have to put something in there to pry, but I just wanna make sure I come straight out because I've got a seal in here on that uh, carrier bearing that I don't want to mess up. So. I'm not sure on my weight distribution at the moment, but it should be pretty good shape. So I'm just gonna kind of watch that as I slide out here. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm gonna lift up just a smidgen. Okay, so I need a little more on the back end. So let's 
just slide everything out here like so. Okay. So we are into that cavity. At this point, let's check it out and see what we've got going on. That inner, that inside is uh, not good. I will just say that. So let's check it out. All right, so here is the brake shoe and it's pretty much, it's like it's all metal to me. We'll pull that thing apart and look at it here. But you can see your rivets where they used to be. And then in here on the inside of this thing, same thing has happened. We're into the housing right there. Not good. Uh, the brake shoes over here on your brake bands themselves look fine. The liners, I should say. And let me grab my light here. And let's see what we've got down in the bottom here. So there's our culprit on why the brake was having a hard time returning. Because it's full of junk. There's the springs I was talking about. One there and one there. Those are fine. All right. Well, crud. We'll have to see what we want to do next. I'm going to make a phone call and uh, see about parts. What we can get. And see what we're gonna do next. So anyway, I might go ahead and pull this apart as well. Should just slide right off of that shaft and then we can look at that, see what it looks like as well. And the inside right here is the inner brake pad and it looks fine. So let's do that. Let's pull this thing off and then uh, get a little closer look at it. All right, so I'm just gonna separate this comes right off the spline. So the splines in the back here are actually larger than the ones that go into the rear end. So again, there's another look at that. The inside shoe looks fine. The springs are not broken in there. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look good up here. All right. Axle looks fine. The inner braking piece, which I'm not quite sure what this is called, but right here, it's uh, it's fine. Surface is nice and smooth. It's not gouged or anything like that, so we don't have an issue there. I think what I am going to do is go ahead inside there and clean that mess out and just see if that frees up that movement on that brake pedal. And hopefully it will. Um, if it does, then we'll have that piece of it. Uh, fix for sure, but then we'll have to take on the other part of it. So let's uh, get that cleaned out. All right, so I got Everything cleaned out pretty good down in there. There's still a little bit that I could not get, but it's not the end of the world. Pretty decent shape with that. Um, what we're going to have to do next is get the brake uh, band out of here. we got to pull this pin, which hopefully it's not seized. If it is, we'll just have to come up here on the top side with the torch, and we'll cut it. And drive it in, cut it, drive it in type thing, just like you would normally do. And get it out of there, and that will be clear. So I've got to get in there to get that inside bearing, rear bearing uh, retainer out of there. On the back side of that, we have a bearing. 
for the rear end. And then you can see actually the pin and the four pinion right there back in the middle. And there's spine, so all that ties together. And there's an oil seal on the back side of this right here to keep oil from splashing over and getting down into your brake cavity. So that's gonna have to be replaced as well. And then we're, we're gonna have to do something with the drum on the other side there. I've got it over at the bench. We'll look into it a little deeper here after a while. Also, in order to get, if I, if I can't unpin this down here, which it is doable, I have done it. I'm gonna have to pull the support for the left arm cylinder. I had to pull it off because right there is the pin that holds all that on. Um, cannot get that thing out unless this is out of the way. So inside there, there's a big hex bolt. Would have to get that out and access it right through that hole. And these two, and that big old heavy block will come out of there. The problem I got right now is the jack stand is on that thing, partially. So I'm gonna have to reposition my, um, my jacks underneath there if we have to do that. So I'm gonna try to not have to mess with it because that's just extra time that I really don't have to be getting that loose. So, you know, we can pull a pin here, pull a pin here, and this will just fall down. We can make sure that whole mechanism is all nice and free because that's what moves from the brake. Um, and that's probably why it's not wanting to return normally. And then once we get the pin out here, then that will allow us to take those brake shoes out. So I guess we'll get rolling on that here in just a few minutes. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull this pin out of here and then I'm gonna disconnect our shoes down here in the bottom and then just try to free all of that linkage up in there. I think that's what's restricting this. It's just got too much friction on it and not allowing that brake pedal to return back to its normal position. So we're gonna start out here. I guess I'll just leave that like this. We're gonna remove this pin. Um, if it doesn't come loose, we'll have to cut it. Uh, otherwise it should just pour or pull right out of here. So we're gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna shoot some lube in here on my top of my uh, bands right here. And then we're just gonna slide that whole pin out. If everything works. Let's see here. Just get back in there and pry. Yes, this one is free, thankfully. All right. Well, that saved us a good bit of time. So I'm gonna grab onto that, pull that pin out. There it is, you saw my bands break free. That pin there, when I stick it back in, I wanna make sure I put anti-seize on that so I don't have to worry about having a problem with that at a later date. All right, so let's take a peek down in here from the top. You can see my bands are separated now. They pulled apart because of those springs that are down here on the on the bottom side right here and on the other. So let's go ahead and get that stuff broke free. Do the same thing like I did before. I'm just gonna kind of leave that up. That's where we're gonna separate them. And let's see, I really need a pair of needle nose pliers, probably. Let's compare these two. So the tops, if we look at 
We look at that, one's offset, one's not. So the one that's straight is in the front. Well, it can't be that, that's the bottom. This is the bottom because there's a spring actually goes like so. Yeah, so they're both, they're both offset. So it just depends on, it's the same shoe. You can just put one to the front, one to the back. So that will just slide together and that's where our pin goes in the bottom. Yep, so that's cool. Well, unfortunately our next step is a little bit bigger. I've got to drain out some fluid because I'm gonna have rear end oil behind us. And I don't know what the height of it is, but it should be close to the bottom. The hole up here is a little bit smaller, probably about the size of this, and the rest of that's casting. Um, wish there was a way I knew exactly how much fluid that I had in there to deal with. I'd like to not have to, to drain any. So I might, might take a little gamble and break them loose and just kind of see what happens. And be prepared, go ahead and stuff some stuff down the bottom there. Additional oil down in here is not gonna hurt anything because it needs to be uh, lubed up a little bit, especially this pivot point right here for these brakes. So this whole mechanism right here, I believe is why that's not returning. It's just so seized up with uh, shavings. So I'm gonna vacuum all of that out, finish getting the rest of that junk out down there in the bottom. There's the brake rod coming through from the front. You can see on the bottom left. I'm gonna clean the rest of that out and then I'm just gonna lube that up with this uh, liquid wrench and just keep moving it back and forth, back and forth and hopefully we'll get the thing to return. It should, the way it's set, and just return real easily right back. I mean, there's nothing that can hold it. So I'm gonna bug around with that for a minute, try to get that loosened up, and then uh, that will actually fix the brake issue that we were diving into, but we found another once we got in here. All right, so that's gonna conclude this video. I'm gonna have a couple other videos here on this brake uh, issue that we've got going on with this 175. So. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, share this video, and stick around. There's more coming up.